Hi everyone, welcome again to our operating system course CSC C69. So in this course you're going to work on a big project and this project is about uh, extending an OS called uh, Pintos. So to work with Pintos uh, you will have to install a bunch of things as x86's emulators like Kimu and Box. Uh, you will have to install a compiler and so on and so forth. But instead of doing that, what I've done is like I've packed all of, uh, um, all of these uh, tools inside a Docker container. Okay? And we're going to use Pintos inside this Docker container. So um, here what I'm going to do in this talk is to help you get started. So at first, I'm going to uh, explain um, how Docker works. And then in the second part of the talk, I'm going to tell you how to use Pintos inside uh, the Docker container. So if you're already familiar with Docker, maybe you can skip the first part and go to the second part with the link I'm going to provide in the uh, description. All right, so let's start. Uh, so of course, the first thing you have to do is to install Docker on your machine. Okay. So depending if you are using Mac, uh, Windows or Linux, uh, the setup is different. Um, but regardless of the OS, make sure to follow the documentation carefully, because once you install it, after the installation, there's still a lot of tweaking to do uh, to have Docker uh, working well. Okay, so uh, make sure that you install it well. So once you have installed it, you can uh, open a terminal and then you have now the Docker command working. Okay, so, um, so let's start our first example with Docker. So with Docker, you're going to start a container. So what's a container? Um, you can think about it as a virtual machine. Right? There are differences between container and virtual machine, but it's not interesting for what we're going to do now. Think about it as some kind of an isolated environment that's going to run its own OS and its, its, um, its own program. Right? Um, so for that, what we need is we need to start with some kind of an image, okay? an image of a system. So here, when we're going to, we're going to say Docker run, we need to pass uh, an image. So uh, here, for example, I'm going to use an image called Ubuntu, which is a small uh, Ubuntu Linux. And then after that, I'm going to tell which command I want to run in this Ubuntu. So here I'm going to run a simple command that says echo uh, hello from Docker. OK, so here when I start this, so it's going to start a container, but first it's going to download the image if it's not already on my computer. OK, so here it's going to download it from uh, Docker Hub Okay, online. So once this is done, it's going to execute the program. And here it is, hello from Docker. So again, this command was executed inside this, uh, inside the, the container. OK, if I do it a second time, you know, it's it doesn't have to download the image because the image is already on my computer and it just execute that command. OK, um, so here. So when you execute the container, it execute the command and then exit. Um, once it exits, it doesn't mean that the container is, is gone. It actually still exists in memory. So if you list the containers that are running, you can see here that I have two containers uh, based on the Ubuntu image. And uh, these two containers have the status exceeded. Okay? Meaning they are, temp they are done, but they still exist in memory. So something I can do is like, you know, I can actually restart them, but most of the time what you want to do is like to stop them. So here I'm going to say Docker RM and I'm going to, they have a name. So I'm going to pass the name. Okay, I'm going to remove the second one here. Okay, and now all my containers are gone. Okay, uh, so, so here let's explore a little bit more our, our commands. So, uh, if you don't want to have to delete the container every time, something you can do is like you can pass another option, which is rm, remove, right? So that now it's going to execute, it's going to do the same thing as before, but now actually it's no longer uh, there, right? You don't have to clean it up manually. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, let's see, uh, something else useful. So what if here, uh, let's see, I'm going to create a file. So here I'm going to say uh, echo hello. Uh, from host, uh, so and I'm going to create uh, hello.txt. Okay, so now I've created a file. It exists here on my uh, uh, host system. Okay, so here I can say uh, cat hello. So what if here I want to start a container that is going to echo that file, right? So 
I mean, I want the container to actually read that file. Is this going to work? Well, the answer is no. Okay. Actually, oh yeah, well, sorry. I was surprised. No, if I do cut this file, yeah. Okay, the answer here is no, it doesn't work. Why? Because the file system of my container is completely separate from the file system of my uh, host here. Um, so, and they are isolated. So, still there is a way actually to share files between the host and the container. So, what you can do is the following. You can add another option, which is dash uh, V here. It's a volume. Okay. And here I'm going to say, okay, I want the, the, to pass the local directory and I want to mount it. You need to mount in point to, for example, slash share. Okay, and here you decide whatever a mounting point uh, you want, right? So if I do that, and here actually it should be followed by the name of the image, so not before. Okay, so now if I do that, and now I can actually uh, show the file, but now I need to pass maybe the full uh, path inside the container. So now if I do this, now we are reading, sharing a file. Um, so now, what if um, I want actually to create an, uh, an Ubuntu container, but I want a shell in there, and I want to do a bunch of things inside the container, okay? So what I can do here is like, instead of starting a command uh, cat here or, or whatever, I can start a shell, okay, bash. But for that, I need two additional options here, which is dash IT, okay? I means interactive and T means terminal. Uh, so here, when I do that, then what I get is a new prompt, and now I'm actually inside the container. Okay, so here, for example, if I say pwd, I'm uh, actually at root, but that's root inside the container, right? If I say who am I, uh, it's going to say I'm root, although it's not the real root. I mean, it's not the root of my system. I'm actually root inside the, the container, but it doesn't mean I have more privilege here. So, okay, so now what I can do is like, of course, I can go back to share uh, because I've mounted the, the share directory. And here I can see my uh, hello.txt, right? If I create another file, for example, here I'm going to say echo uh, hello from Docker or from inside. And now I say, I'm going to say it's inside inside.txt, uh, okay? Now uh, I have these two files here. And actually, if I open another shell, okay, just to show you, Actually, let me do that. Let me open a separate shell. Um, mm -mm. Okay. Uh, so now, actually, I have actually this file here on my on my system as well, right? So everything I create inside it, it's outside as long as it's in the shared directory. Uh, but if I create something as, you know, for example, in slash root, which is not in the share folder, and here I say echo, uh, this is private, okay, uh, and uh, private.txt, okay, here I've created a file private, okay, but this file is not in my share folder. So I, actually, if I do that and I exit, and then I start again a new container, even if I go to slash root, okay, my file is gone, right? Why? Because every time you say docker run, it runs a new instance. Okay, so the, the old one is actually uh, gone, okay, because I had RM here. So, okay, um, so now what if, what if I want actually to open two uh, shells, but on the, from, uh, on the same container? So here, for example, I want to be able to run another shell, but on the same container, okay? And that's going to be useful later, actually. So here, rather than doing a, a Docker run, because run is going to run another container, I'm going to exec on my existing container. So for, for that, first, I need to know the name. Okay. And here I can say docker exec uh, on, uh, so dash it because it's going to be a shell. And then again, bash. Okay. And now actually I'm in the same container. So for example, if I go to slash root and I create a file on um, hello in slash root, uh, now this file is here, right? Because it's the same container. Okay, uh, so quickly, it might be kind of tedious to always get the name of the machine before uh, doing exec. So what you can do is actually uh, something useful is you can name a container. You can decide on the name. So here I'm going to say the name is going to be 
uh, my container. Okay. And here, the good thing with that is like, it will be always the same name. So here you can always say docker exec dash it uh, my container um, and then bash. Okay. And now you're in the container. Okay. Um, all right. So that's it. That's the kind of, uh, I mean, the very few commands in Docker that you need um, to start working with uh, Pintos. Okay, so now uh, let's start talking about uh, Pintos. Uh, so here, if you go back to the course documentation on getting started, uh, so here it tells you actually that, okay, to get started, here is the Docker command to start uh, Pintos. Okay, so uh, here when you do that, what it does, it first, as you can see, this is a new image that I've created called CherrySense slash Pintos. And so here, of course, uh, Docker is going to download it. So here what I've done is like, of course, it's Docker run, remove, I name it Pintos. Uh, this is a new uh, um, argument. Here actually I set up the, the, diff, the, um, the current working uh, path. Okay. And here after that, I'm going to execute the command Pintos and I'm going to run this program RM0 inside Pintos. Okay. And I'm going to um, quit as soon as the, the program is done. Okay. So, so this my Docker container is going to run that Pintos uh, command. Okay. As soon as it's finished downloading. Okay, a few more data. So here, just to um, explain what inside this image. So first of all, it's based on an Ubuntu image. But on top of that, I've added the Pintos uh, source code. I've compiled it. Uh, there is the box emulator, the Kimu emulator, uh, all the, the development uh, tools and compilers and so on, right? All the build essentials. Okay, almost there. So the good thing you have only to do that once. Once the image is on your, your system, you don't have even to be connected to the internet. Uh, here you go. So now it's starting the command. So it's starting the box emulator here. And then later on, start the Pintos kernel. Uh, at first, initialize a bunch, bunch of things, then run the program RM0, and then once it's done, it's showing some, um, some information, then power off, and then box is done. So here I have executing a, a Pintos command. Uh, by the way, you can, so by default here, it uses the, 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 Kimu, uh, the, sorry, the box emulator, but we can use the Kimu one. Okay, so you say dash dash Kimu to Pintos, and here it's actually going to start with uh, Kimu, right? But of course, the output here, starting from here to there, it's the same. All right. So, um, so right. So what you can do now is uh, so instead of starting the command, of course, you can start uh, bash. Okay, assuming that you have uh, dash uh, it. And of course, here what you're going to find is that on uh, cd slash pintos, um, you have uh, the source code, okay? So you can go in the source and then you can go to your first project and uh, here it's actually already built, so still you can compile it, um, but then it's already built, right? So here you could actually do some uh, modifications and so on, recompile and then start again, but be careful because if you exit, everything is gone, right? 
Why? Because, well, we are not sharing anything here. So every modification you do in the container, as soon as you exit, it's going to be gone. So that's not how we're going to work really with, with Pintos um, with the container. So what we're going to do here is first, uh, we need to have our own version of the uh, source code. So here I'm going to uh, kind of uh, clone the source code. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot clone. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is like I'm going to go into this source code and here I'm going to give the same command Pintos, but this time, so I don't need the working directory, actually. this time I'm going to create a volume and I'm going to mount my local version of the Pintos uh, source code into slash Pintos. Okay, and this one actually is going to overwrite the existing slash Pintos directory there. All right. So if I do that, now I have my own version of the code. So here it means that I can basically uh, open it. OK. I can uh, modify things on my code editor here. And I can recompile inside uh, inside the, the container, right? Never outside, inside. Uh, so here, uh, OK. So at first, what you have to do is like, you have to go to utils and compile it one for for all, so make, uh, make. Okay, you run the make on utils, and then what you can do is like you can go on the, your first project threads, and here you can actually compile it. Okay, because there is no kernel uh, compiled here, so we need to compile it the first time. It might take long. If you feel it's it's a bit slow, what you can do is like you can go to your Docker settings preference, and here uh, you can add a little bit of of RAM. Okay, uh, I think the CPU is fine and disk is fine, but maybe adding a little bit of RAM could be useful. So if you go to resources here, maybe if you have enough like uh, a RAM, you can maybe sp um, bump that to eight gig. Uh, I think you have to restart uh, a Docker, so I'm not going to do it now, but that would be a good thing if you think it's a bit slow. Uh, all right. Almost there. OK, so once it's compiled, you go into, into build, and now you have your own uh, kind of uh, compiled version of Pintos. So here you can, again, start some uh, command. You can say docker run, rm0, and so on and so forth. Right, so now you have you have this working, and same thing actually, again with Kimu. Okay, uh, so now you are ready to work, right? You can you can uh, uh, work on Pintos and extend it. Um, as I told you uh, in class, um, so you have we give you all the tests, right? You have um, some uh, test case here, and so if you do make grade, it's going to run all of these uh, tests. And it's gonna calculate your grade. Actually, you will know exactly how much uh, of work you have you have completed, right? So it's very, uh, um, it's quite useful. So let's see. So here it's gonna run a bunch of tests. So I'm gonna actually uh, uh, keep. Um, so you can see all the tests here. That's the first test. For example, Pintos, um, um, it runs actually RM single. So I'm gonna copy that. I can let it run. So here, what you can do is like. Um, so of course, so you are gonna run all the tests probably at the end, right? Once you have done everything uh, that is required in the in the handout, um, just to test that everything is fine. But as you develop, most probably what you're going to do is like, you're going to focus on one test and you're going to try to make that, that one test work. Okay. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to let this run, but actually what I can do is like, I can open another uh, terminal. So docker exec uh, dash it, uh, I name it pintos uh, bash, I'm going to add another bash script. OK, so here, let's go again uh, to um, uh, to the source. So source, uh, build, uh, no, not build, thread, build. And OK, I'm here. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to stop the automatic testing here. Um, OK, it says it's not failed, but that's OK. So here, for example, if I were to run one single test, I would do that, right? So here it's going gonna, it's gonna to run that instance of a test. 
So this actually is working, uh, everything is fine, but let's assume that there is a bug and I want to debug, right? So uh, one way to debug is to use GDB. And here with Pintos, we can actually use GDB. So for that, we're gonna say, okay, I want to um, debug this uh, test. So here you start GDB, and when you start that, it's gonna start box, but then it's gonna stop. It's not gonna run the program RM single yet. So what you can do then is using another terminal, so that's why it's useful to have another terminal, you can start Pintos GDB. So you have to start in the build directory, okay? And here we're gonna say Pintos GDB, and we're gonna start past the kernel, okay, dot O. So we start the, uh, the debugger, and then here um, it says, okay, I've read the symbol for kernel dot O. Okay, that's kind of important, otherwise it's gonna give you weird results. And then, and then what? So probably you have learned how to use GDB that in GDB you can actually execute the program and so on. It's not gonna, gonna be like this here. We already have a program running on a different uh, terminal. So here what we're gonna do is like, we're gonna connect to this running program here. And that's why it's waiting for a connection. So there is, there is a macro for that called debug Pintos. And as soon as you do that, it's gonna connect. So here you see, uh, we are probably at an address here, which is the, the, the bootloader, the beginning of, of Pintos, right? So then now we are ready actually to uh, debug, right? So for, first of all, I, for example, if I say continue, it's gonna continue until the end and then stop, okay? Or if you have a bug, it's gonna stop at the bug and then you can, you can debug, right? So here actually, if I restart again, uh, you can do whatever the debugger can do and even more. Uh, so here, let's start again. So debug Pintos. Uh, so something you can do, for example, which you're gonna do in the first um, project is you're gonna look at the scheduler. So here I'm gonna put a breakpoint in a schedule. Uh, so here, if you look at the source code, um, schedule is actually here in thread.c. Yeah, that's our scheduler. Okay, maybe I should make it bigger here. So we're gonna put a breakpoint here. So if we put a breakpoint here in schedule, so, okay, so breakpoint is set, I'm gonna continue, and now it's gonna run the program until it reaches that breakpoint. Once I'm here, I can see that I'm at the beginning of the function. I can run the next few instructions step by step, okay? And then I can even like print some information. So here, for example, I'm gonna print the content of the pointer cure here. And that's actually showing me uh, what is the current running uh, thread in Pintos, okay? Uh, same thing, I can do p.next, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So I can do a bunch of things like this, I can continue until the next breakpoint, and so on and so forth. And there is even like more um, uh, macros specific to Pintos to help you actually look at uh, uh, the stack, uh, look at all the threads, uh, uh, and so on. Right? But for that, maybe that's gonna be another uh, video. Right? So I'm gonna stop here. My goal was just to give you some kind of a, a, a first um, um, hands-on on, on getting started with Pintos and Docker. Okay, I hope this was useful. And uh, well, hopefully I'm gonna make another video uh, to explain more things around Pintos. All right, thank you, bye.